This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has announced the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize will be awarded to the imprisoned human rights activist Alas Bialyatsky from Belarus, as well as the Russian human rights group Memorial and the Ukrainian organization Center for Civil Liberties. The Norwegian Nobel Committee announced this year's Peace Prize winners at a ceremony this morning in Oslo. By awarding the Nobel Peace Prize for 2022 to Alice Bialyatsky, Memorial and the Center for Civil Liberties, the Norwegian Nobel Committee wishes to honor three outstanding champions of human rights, democracy and peaceful coexistence in the neighbor countries Belarus, Russia and Ukraine. Through their consistent efforts in favor of human values, anti-militarism and principles of law, this year's laureates have revitalized and honored Alfred Nobel's vision of peace and fraternity between nations, a vision most needed in the world today. After the Nobel Committee's announcement, Anna Chushova of the Center for Civil Liberties in Ukraine spoke to reporters. I am happy. I am delighted to be part of the team that is so motivated, that does such wonderful things for our country. We understand that defenders of law are catalysts of changes, and this recognition motivates us even more to introduce these changes into our society. When the full-scale aggression started, we obviously did not sit idle. We organized a team of defenders of law, which actively documented war crimes. We have logged over 20,000 war crimes so far, and this is done in order to punish all perpetrators. We're joined now by two guests. Joining us from Stockholm, Sweden, is Ulla Vanuxku. He is executive director of the Stockholm-based Right Livelihood Award Foundation. All three winners of this year's Nobel Peace Prize are Right Livelihood laureates. And with us in Moscow is Anna Dubrovolskaya. She is the former executive director of the Memorial Human Rights Center in Moscow, which was part of the group Memorial, which has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Her organization was shut down by the Russian government. Anna, let's begin with you, the significance of this announcement. Did you know before the exact announcement that your group was going to win the Nobel Peace Prize? And what does this mean for what's happening right now in Russia? Mm -hmm. Uh, hello, Amy. Uh, no, I had no idea that uh, we can be uh, winners uh, this year. Memorial have been nominated several uh, few times before, and some of our staff members have been nominated to the Nobel Peace Prize before. And of course, it's a great honor. Um, I, though I'm no longer with Memorial, I still keep uh, receiving congratulations from all over the world, and people consider this as a common victory for civil society. Uh, not just in Russia, because uh, there is, it has some importance in Russia, but it's extremely important now when there is a war uh, between Russia and Ukraine. It is extremely important now to support uh, organizations in all of those countries, and especially it is important for Ares, who is behind the bars. Uh, in Russia, I'm sure it will also have some significant um, importance, uh, because Memorial keeps uh, facing huge difficulties in continuation of its work, uh, although the legal entities have been shut down. So I'm hoping that uh, Russian authorities will step back. But unfortunately, as we know, it didn't help uh, for example, Nova Gazeta, whose uh, uh, editor-in-chief was awarded uh, uh, the Peace Prize before. Uh, so, unfortunately, no, no uh, bright forecast here. And talk about what Memorial worked on when it was allowed to function and what needs to be done right now in Russia. Uh, when Memorial was able to function, we did uh, lots of things. Uh, uh, we had two major... Um, laws of work, so to say. We had the 
uh, pillar related to historical remembrance, uh, Soviet past, the political repressions during Soviet time, uh, and memorization of uh, those uh, events. And we had this human rights wing, which I was the, the chair of. Uh, we worked uh, with the documenting the war crimes in Chechnya. We documented uh, human rights violations all over the country. We helped uh, the victims of political uh, repressions and also provided uh, various uh, legal aid to the victims of human rights violations everywhere. Right now, uh, this all better be continued because modern Russia is uh, the place where lots of violations is happening. And actually, the current events is the continuation of the thought that has been promoted for memorial by memorial for a long period of time, that if you have uh, human rights violations within the country which are ignored and where you have impu impunity instead of... Uh, uh, putting people uh, responsible for those human rights violations, uh, it means that sooner or later it will go beyond the borders, uh, beyond the national borders of the country, and that's what we see uh, exactly now uh, with Russia, Ukraine, before with Georgia, and with some other countries as well. In March, Democracy Now! spoke to Alexandra Matvichuk, the head of the Center for Civil Liberties in Ukraine, which won the Nobel Peace Prize today. This is what she said then. When the war started, I, I asked myself, do I feel a fear? And I was emotional, but I don't have fear. I have two main emotions. The first emotion is anger. I really anger as a millions of Ukrainians that Russia invades to our country, that Russia tried to stop our democratic choice, that Russia tried to impose the logic of Soviet Union and push us away to the past, which we don't want to return to. And, but most uh, big emotion is love. This is a love to my country. This is a love to our people. It's love to our values. And we will stand for it. And this is Alexandra Matvichuk speaking in a video produced by the Right Livelihood Foundation. She's one of this year's Right Livelihood laureates. Now in Ukraine, we are going through the difficult times. We are fighting for our freedom in all senses. For a freedom to be independent country. For a freedom to be Ukrainians with our own language and culture. And for a freedom to have a democratic choice. We are documenting war crimes in this war with Russia in order to hold war criminals accountable, to provide justice for each victims of these crimes. Ola van Uxkul is the executive director of the Right Livelihood Award Foundation, which is based in Stockholm, Sweden. They produced that video uh, because uh, um, th uh, the Center for um, uh, the CCL, the Ukraine Human Rights Group, uh, the Center for Civil Liberties, um, not only won the Nobel Peace Prize today, but it was just announced they won the Right Livelihood Awards. Can you talk about the significance of the two organizations conversing, the Nobel Committee and the Right Livelihood Awards, and just who Alexandra, CCL, um, Memorial, and the Belarusian group, uh, Belarusian human rights activists in prison right now, um, what this means, Ola? Thank you, Amy, and um, congratulations, Anna. I am overjoyed. It was amazing for us to hear this morning when we followed the announcement from Oslo, and then, as you heard, a first Right Livelihood Award laureate was announced as a Nobel Peace laureate, and then a second one, and then even a third one. And um, awarding them together, I think, is very significant. It's a very, very good sign, and it's particularly significant that they receive a peace award. They as defenders of democracy and as defenders of the rule of law, receive a peace award. Because as Anna already pointed out, democracy is really a precondition for peace. And, and we see in their work how they are uh, laying the foundations for post-Soviet societies to be peaceful. And um, that, I mean, that's something we've been hearing from Memorial and from Alice Bialyatsky, who have been our laureates uh, for a bit longer, for many years, that the crackdown they experience in their own countries also has to be read and understood as a preparation for war. And I think it, it's particularly fantastic. I mean, they both, uh, Vyasna, uh, Alice Bialyatsky and Memorial are from, still from, have their roots in the democracy movement of the 80s. Oleksandra Matvichuk, who we just heard is a younger 
generation of democracy activist. I think she's 38 years now, um, started her activism already 15 years ago. And this work that she does really shows the alternative to that kind of brutal aggression, the alternative which um, you can find in, in international law and accountability. And Anna, if you can talk about the significance of a Russian group, um, a Belarusian um, human rights activist now in prison, and CCL in Ukraine winning this award together. In the West, it's always presented as Russia versus Ukraine, but um, your perspective as a human rights activist and lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a very good question, actually. Uh, a lot of people are now concerned about the words which were said in the Nobel Peace Committee, saying that uh, they were hoping for the peaceful coexistence. And actually, a lot of—for many people of Ukraine, the, those words about peaceful coexistence were very, very controversial. And uh, some people will also see that building this together, like bringing Ukraine, Belarus and Russia together, is some kind of attempt to stress out that these countries still have the common past and maybe they still have common future as, as uh, that's what uh, Vladimir Putin and his uh, government is hoping for. So here I see some uh, potential contradiction, but uh, at the same time I know that, and we all know that there always will be people who are not satisfied or completely happy with uh, this or uh, any other decision. Um, some people in uh, my team in Memorial, they said, uh, I spoke to them this morning and they said that we think that we don't deserve it because we couldn't stop the war. We couldn't be receiving the peace prize in this uh, horrible moment uh, because, uh, yeah, the war is still going. We couldn't stop the war in Chechnya. There was a war in Georgia. There was a war in Syria and in many other places. But again, uh, the question is, uh, would it be different without us? And we most surely know that it, uh, the, the world will be, will be probably a worse uh, place without uh, uh, human rights activists in Belarus and Ukraine and, of course, in Russia. And I'm definitely hoping that for Alex Bilyatsky, uh, my long-time esteemed colleague, that this will help to put not just him but many other people, uh, activists and journalists from Belarus, uh, out of the bars because uh, they keep receiving horrible... Um, sentences. Just yesterday, a uh, very prominent journalist, Andrei Alexandrov, was uh, sentenced to 14 years uh, in prison, which is uh, absolutely horrible. And I'm just hoping that the demonstration that there is a peace prize and that the international community is paying attention to uh, the work of civil society in all the three countries will definitely change uh, the fate, not just of the laureates, but of everyone. I want to go to um, the imprisoned Belarusian activist Alas Bialyatsky, who just won the Nobel Peace Prize. This is a couple-minute video produced by the Right Livelihood Foundation when he won in 2020. Alias Bielatsky is a human rights activist in Belarus, leading an almost 30-year campaign for democracy and freedom. In 1996, he founded the human rights center Vyazna, which today is the country's leading organization documenting human rights abuses and monitoring elections. Belarus, under the authoritarian rule of President Alexander Lukashenko, is often referred to as Europe's last dictatorship. Elections are rigged, opposition voices are silenced, and civil society is severely restricted. Bieletsky has been arrested more than 25 times and spent several years in prison on trumped-up charges, as Belarusian authorities have tried to impede him. The government has also frequently targeted Vyazna and its members. However, Bielatsky and Vyazna's persistent and long-standing efforts to empower the people of Belarus and ensure their democratic rights have rendered them an unstoppable force for freedom. During the recent large-scale pro-democracy demonstrations, Vyazna has been playing a leading role in advocating for the freedom of assembly, defending the rights of people arrested for protesting, and documenting human rights abuses. Bielatsky and Vyazna continue to stand for the multitude of courageous people protesting Lukashenko's dictatorial reign at high personal risk. Through their commitment
commitment to democracy and freedom, Bielecki and Vyazna have laid the foundations of a peaceful and democratic society in Belarus. And let's hear the imprisoned Belarusian human rights activist Alas Bialatsky in his own words. Again, today it was announced he's won the Nobel Peace Prize. He spoke in Stockholm when he won the 2020 Right Livelihood Award. Dear friends, this year's Right Livelihood Award to the Human Rights Center, Vyaznia and myself, is a very important and exciting moment in our lives. We are receiving the award, popularly called the Alternative Nobel Prize, at a time when a peaceful revolution is underway in Belarus. For six months now, the Belarusian society has been engaged in a breathtaking struggle, a fight for human rights, democracy and justice. A fight for the right to be called people, as the Belarusian writer Yanka Kupala has said, a fight against Europe's last dictator and the regime he has built over 26 years. Alas Bielatsky ended his Right Livelihood Award acceptance speech speaking in English. Um, he congratulated his fellow winners, including the leading human rights activist in the United States, Brian Stevenson, and the Right Livelihood Award winner, the Iranian human rights lawyer Nasreen Satuda, who was in prison at the time. There, Nasreen is in a terrible situation now. I can imagine how it is for her to be in prison and even harder to go back. Sometimes I have dreams that I'm in prison again, and those are my darkness dreams. My heart and thoughts are with Nasrin now. Thank you. Nasreen Satudeh, the Iranian human rights lawyer, was in prison in 2020. She is home now on medical leave from prison. Um, Ola Vanakskul, I want to go back to you um, to talk about that moment. I was just texting with Brian Stevenson, who also won that year. He's calling for Alice's freedom for his release from prison, congratulated him, winning the Nobel Peace Prize today. Um, he was not able to meet him in person because it was in the midst of the pandemic. I believe Alice was the only one, right, who came to Sweden for the yes. awards, and so you spent time with him. Yeah, that uh, was really incredible also not to, to hear his words there again, and very typical for him to always think of others first and think of the, the international and you know, universal nature of this fight for democracy and for human rights. And uh, he called the prospect of having to go to prison his darkest dream in what we just heard, and unfortunately that is what happened last summer. He was arrested again together with other Vyasna colleagues. He just spent his 60th birthday, now a couple of uh, days ago, in prison in very bad conditions that we have also been protesting at the UN Human Rights Council. So with this Nobel Peace Prize now, Belarus has to understand that they have to immediately release Alex Berliatsky and all the Vyasna staff and other pro-democracy uh, fighters who are in prison. And they also, and Russia has to understand that they have to end their legal prosecution of, mem of Memorial. And I hope that will be the effect of this award. Earlier this year, Democracy Now! spoke to Natalia Satsenkevich. She works with the imprisoned Belarusian activist Alas Bielatsky in their organization, which in English translates into spring. She was speaking to us um, from Vilnius. This was in March, um, from Vilnius um, in Lithuania, talking about her country. There are more than 1,000 of political prisoners uh, in Belarus, and the conditions where they stay, they're awful. It influences extremely on their health, and uh, there is at least one case when a person died in Belarusian prison, a political prisoner. So uh, I really call you to keep in focus um, this topic also, political prisoners in Belarus, and uh, 
uh, to spread this information, to show your solidarity and to support them by uh, sending letters and postcards of solidarity from all countries from the world. So, Anna Dubrovskaya, uh, again, you're in Moscow, uh, di executive director of what was the Memorial Human Rights Center in Moscow. If you can talk about the role of Belarus right now in Russia's uh, war on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, uh, it is very hard uh, to, to describe what is going on, because um, we have the official um, position, which is like um, Belarus has nothing to do with the war, but uh, unofficially we, of course, see that a lot of uh, troops, a lot of uh, weaponry and a lot of uh, like logistical flaws are made through Belarus. And it was recently reported that there was first uh, missile uh, issued uh, on Ukrainian territory from Belarus. And Lukashenko is a very uh, close person to Putin. He is like... Uh, the closest companion maybe of uh, all post-Soviet countries. And in terms of civil society, we see that Belarus is like a few steps ahead of us, uh, ahead of Russia. And unfortunately, what is happening in Belarus, uh, what was happening in Belarus before starts happening in Russia, like uh, maybe in a couple of years. And uh, right now, the, the situation there with the civil society and everything is uh, absolutely horrible. But unfortunately, in the international uh, agenda, people of Belarus, as well as people of Russia, are presented often as those who support the war, which is absolutely not true, and especially for Belarus. It's a country where almost no protest is uh, possible and where people are being um, severely beaten up and detained, uh, even, uh, even if they try to do something very, very innocent, like, I don't know, uh, giving money to some opposition groups or something like that. And unfortunately, looking at Belarus, we always see that this is the future of Russia. If to nothing changes. Today's Nobel announcement comes on Vladimir Putin's 70th birthday and also on the 16th anniversary of the assassination of a fierce journalist, uh, Anna Polakovskaya, critic of Putin, uh, critic of Russia's war in Chechnya, crusading human rights and anti corruption reporter. Um, what do we know about her death at this time, Anna? Uh, I'm not sure about the recent developments, um, but I, I think that it was not properly investigated at this moment, as it happened with the death of all other journalists and human rights activists in Russia. There probably are some people who are being imprisoned due to the fact that they are being the like uh, th those who implemented the, the murder itself, but uh, there was no proper investigation of her death or of the death of Natalia Istimirova who is a human rights uh, activist from Chechnya and uh, my colleague from Memorial. So unfortunately, all these uh, crimes are not being, uh, yeah, they're not being taken care of by, by the government. Uh, you, previously, we had the possibility of going to European court if uh, stuff like this happened, but right now it's not the option again for the Russian human rights defenders. Uh, so yeah, uh, her death was a, was a tragedy. It was the first one, uh, followed by, uh, unfortunately, many others. And to this day, she's very well remembered people uh, she has books uh, people come bringing flowers to the place in moscow where she lived and uh, everyone understands that uh, this death her, ki her killing her murder was like uh, the point of no return where uh, it was already clear that russia is going into some strange direction uh, now how do you see this war ending Oh my God! <laughs> um, I would really, really hope. Uh, well, it's 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 really difficult because um, a lot of people are hoping that Ukraine will win. I'm hoping that uh, there could be some possible settlement. I'm definitely seeing that Russia will pay a lot of money to everything uh, that happened in Ukraine, and that I'm really hoping that it will there will be some international tribunal uh, against the war criminals, against the military criminals, and people who were accountable will be uh, held accountable further. That's, that's my hope. Uh, will there be some peace negotiation now or later? That's just very, very hard to predict. And a lot of people are saying that no peace is possible and no peace agreement is possible, which is, of course, understandable. I'm just hoping that... Um, Nobody will die, but unfortunately, the, the conflict is still going on. And Oliver Nuxkul, um, you know, the Right Livelihood Awards are often referred to as the alternative Nobel 
prize. Um, now, the alternative has merged with the actual Nobel Prize. And if you can talk about what that means and in the world today, to see human rights activists and groups in Belarus and Ukraine and Russia all receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, what this could lead to. Thank you, uh, Amy. Yeah, we've been uh, presenting the Right Livelihood Award since uh, 1980, and there has been an understanding of the importance of civil society activism from the very beginning. And with the Nobel Prize, sometimes they honor that, but then also they honor people like Abiy of in Ethiopia or Barack Obama, um, with where there seems to be a totally different kind of understanding of um, you know, how change should come about in the world. We believe strongly that um, power lies in uh, people who get organized to fight for uh, important causes like democracy, like peace, like human rights, and that that actually has a huge effect. And in, in this regard, I would say that uh, the three Right Livelihood, now Right Livelihood Nobel laureates who um, won the Nobel Peace Prize today. That's an incredible message of hope. It's really uh, a symbol of the weakness of Vladimir Putin and the old-style military aggression, with all its dangers to world peace, right? I'm not doubting that. But it shows the enormous power of the civilized way to handle conflict in, in international conflicts, to build uh, societies um, for peace, which is, you know, by rule of law, through mechanisms of democracy. It's incredible that the, the CCL, the Center for Civil Liberties, Alexander Matvichuk, who we heard, um, they have uh, collected more than 20,000 pieces of evidence for war crimes. So I have no doubt that there is going to be accountability. Putin is going to emerge as the loser, and not through the traditional military means alone, but really be defeated by accountability, by rule of law, by democracy. And that, for me, is the message of hope, which Nobel uh, picked up this year, very much in line with, with our thinking for uh, more than four decades. And um, Since yeah, you seem to be a predictor of those who will win the Nobel Peace Prize, can you talk about <laughs> who won this year? You just made the announcement for the Right Livelihood Award Foundation, the four winners. Right. Um, we also gave an award to Somalia this year, to uh, Ilwan Elman and Fatun Adan, a mother and daughter who've built the Elman Peace Center, which does local peace work with communities, for instance, disarmament of uh, former combatants, working a lot with child soldiers, working um, against gender-based violence. And uh, for us, it was also very important and, and a really good message to have uh, this conflict in Somalia, which unfortunately for too many uh, around the world uh, is perceived as more of a forgotten conflict, um, you know, to have that honored in the same year with Ukraine, which uh, very rightly so gets a lot of uh, attention right now, because there are so many parallels in, in how you work for peace. And then we always have four laureates. So our award also goes to Seco Sesola, which is a cooperative, a network of cooperatives in Venezuela that are providing more than 100,000 families um, for their needs, much more successfully so than the failing economic system, and really shows the power of solidarity economics in times of crisis. And we give an award to the Africa Institute for Energy Governance from Uganda for its work for uh, localized, decentralized, renewable energy and their important voice in the campaign against the disastrous East Africa crude oil pipeline and bringing the voices of local people in, into these international campaigns. And finally, um, we've been tracking the rise of neo-fascism in Europe, whether we're talking about Maloney in Italy, the Brothers of Italy party, to be the new well, most far-right prime minister since Mussolini um, uh, is very proud to embrace Mussolini, um, Poland's uh, uh, ruling party, and, of course, what's happening in Sweden with the Sweden Democrats um, might surprise people 
to hear who the Swedish Democrats are. Is this a concern of yours, Ola, as you speak to us from Stockholm? Oh, it's a huge concern. It, it is terrible. The Sweden Democrats are a party with its roots in uh, fascism. And the conservative and even the liberal party now chose to align themselves with the Sweden Democrats uh, just for tactical gain in order to be able to get the next prime minister elected. And when traditional um, established parties do something like that, we've seen so many times in, in history, then obviously, um, you know, they, they normalize this kind of hateful discourse, um, which borders to fascism. And in the process, um, people then, in the end, vote for the original. So uh, the conservatives were defeated, but now together with their new ally, the Sweden Democrats, they will probably form the next government. And that's just, it's a terrible blow to, to Sweden. It's not a coincidence that an organization like ours was founded in this country, but it was founded in this country because also of our history, long standing history here, supporting democracy and rule of law and human rights around the world. And now Sweden will not be able to do that in a credible way any longer. And, and people don't seem to realize that that's going to weaken Sweden a lot. Like what I just said, you know, the, the power of, uh, of the universal values of democracy and rule of law. Uh, yes, they are under attack, but um, I think they, they will prevail. And it's, um, it's very sad to see Sweden starting to turn away from this camp. Oliver Nuxkluwi, thank you so much for being with us, executive director of the Stockholm-based Right Livelihood Award Foundation. Uh, the Right Livelihood Awards have gone to all three Nobel Peace Prize winners announced today. Uh, and I also want to thank Anna Dubrovolskaya, uh, executive director of now closed down Memorial Human Rights Center in Moscow. Memorial um, was just honored uh, by the Norwegian Nobel committee. She was speaking to us from Moscow. Coming up, the President Biden—President Biden pardons thousands of people convicted of marijuana possession. We'll speak to the Drug Policy Alliance. Stay with us.